Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. It's great being here tonight. You guys are glad on a Wednesday night God could do something? No? I'm telling you what, man, it's been hot around here, hasn't it? I mean, woo, Lord. we live in Santa Barbara. You know how many know where Santa Barbara is, right? So if you don't know where that is, where you go before you go to heaven. That's where we got that heavenly look around us, you know what I mean? So, hey, this is our second time. Your pastor um, uh, opened the door for us. How many was here the first time? Oh, man, look at that. Well, all right. And I already told the ushers if you try to leave early to tackle you. All right. So uh, we're going to have a good time tonight, my wife and I. Are hey, man, I'm so excited that, you know, your pastors are going to lead this into a missions in an international church. And, you know, there's a small church over there in Houston, Texas which was founded by uh, his father, Joel, John Osteen, that was a missions church and became Joel Osteen, largest church in the United States because they emphasize missions. Yeah. And you're doing that sex trafficking um, thing, and it's going to be awesome because you're going to save all these young children, and it's going to uh, be a blessing, and you're going to have a part in it, and it's going to be something that's going to connect this area to that area. It's just amazing how the world is shrinking but it takes Christians rising up and doing something about what they've got right we can't sit at our blessed assurance we've got to get up there and start moving go ahead preach right? you might even get an offering all right give it to me honey hey well you ain't done nothing yet you ain't getting no offering <laughs> well, let's cast out hey I noticed that you guys give away good gifts so man I'm, I think I'm gonna come back next Sunday just get a donut <laughs> I like donut how many like donuts the rest of you are backslidden Hallelujah. Well, are you ready? We're going to do it. Are you ready? Amen. L look at somebody and say, are, are you ready? Are you ready? All right. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, um, you know, we travel all over the, uh, the world, and um, we, we've been probably twice around the world. Some of those shots that you've uh, seen on the screen, uh, uh, that was one of the largest churches. Mary went and ministered there and did a prophetic word for the pastor there. And so I think it's got like 25,000 people there. How would you like to have a church of 25,000? Yeah, there's two of you. The rest of you. Somebody says, I don't like crowds. Really? Well, if you don't like crowds, you're not going to like heaven. And I can tell you there's another crowd you will not like. <laughs> All right. But, you know, uh, God's doing a great thing in the earth today. The Bible says uh, the glory of the latter house I know some of you looking at me, checking me out. I'm checking you out too. Huh? If my message don't get you, my shirt will. I mean, you'll walk out going, "My God, what was that in his?" You know. <laughs> but God said in the last days, He said, "The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former." And God saved the the last for the best. We're it. Come on. And uh, I'm excited about what's going to take place uh, uh, in your church because. Uh, your, your your pastors have a vision, and, and I mean, you can see, look, they have three services on Sunday morning, and I mean, my God, I mean, you got to get a bigger building. So, some people don't even know that other people go to their church. And that happens sometimes, you have three or four services, but uh, 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 your pastors are doing a great work, the team. Let's give them a hand, give the team a hand, come on. Let's. You know, we, um, we travel a little different, um, you know, uh, group of people at times. You know, God's given us a platform, you know. Uh, now, let me just stop here and say, we don't use my daughter. You know, people say, well, you know, Katy Perry, you, you use her and all kinds of stuff. You know, the, the, it's on the papers and the magazines. They write lies, you know, fake news and all that stuff. But we don't use our daughter. We never have because we have a great relationship. And I think, number one, your family is very important. If you don't have your family together, you don't really have anything. And they're number one. And we have a real tight family. And we guard one another. We protect one another. We watch over one another. We pray over one another. And, and, um, but uh, God's given us a platform to minister to um, uh, the industry. You know, some uh, people behind the scenes where you'll never go because, you know, unless you're an entertainer or something. But God's given us this platform. And uh, it's amazing uh, what God is doing in Hollywood. 
I, I want you to stop saying Hollywood is going to hell. Because a lot of people say that, well, you know, Hollywood's going to hell. Well, let me ask you something. Where were you going <laughs> before you got saved? Come on. And, and you know what? If we're going to uh, reach this generation, and come on, we cannot, we cannot afford to lose this generation. And God has his hand on them. And, and, and if we're going to reach them, we've got to get into those places. Come on. And get to those uh, entertainers and, and the musicians. And, and, and you'll be surprised uh, in these days to come. Now listen to me. Remember I said this, that you're going to be surprised who's going to stand up and really start giving God the glory. How would you like uh, Lady Gaga getting up singing, Jesus loves me, this I know. <laughs> It'd probably be in a different tune. Amen. But God is moving in that, and he's uh, given us a, a platform for this generation, and, and my heart is for, for, the, for, for the young people here. And you say, well, w w wait a minute, you're, you're a little bit too old. And no, I'm not old, I'm seasoned. There's a difference between if you want to get old, you get old. But if you want to get seasoned, get seasoned. And I found out that this generation, uh, they will listen to seasoned men and women. Come on. And so God has got his hand on them, and he's doing great things. Uh, uh, and they're the ones that are going after the harvest. And can I say something? There's a harvest out there. I said, there's a harvest, and they're waiting on you. And you know what they want? They want the real Jesus. They, they don't want the church Jesus. And they don't want the religious Jesus. They want the real Jesus. And you know what? Your pastors uh, give you the real Jesus every week. Come on, somebody. Aren't they give you the... And I found out that they don't really care how spiritual you are. Because some church folks are too spiritual. Look straight ahead. Don't look at anybody. <laughs> I mean, you got to have King James and all your vocabulary. And you, you have to talk spiritual thing. Everything is spiritual. You know, I was walking down Walmart the other day. And there was beans uh, on sale. And the Lord told me to buy some beans. And, you know, I didn't just buy a can of beans. I bought a whole case of beans. I mean, you know, God didn't tell you to buy beans because beans cause a reaction, and that is not of God. <laughs> Somebody say amen. You try to spiritualize everything, and, 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 and you got to have scripture for everything. And, and I mean, you know what? They just want you to be you. They want, they're looking for the real. They just want you. You know what they really want? They want to know, do you love me? And you know what's going to captivate them? And what has captivated you and caused you to come on a Wednesday night or a Sunday morning and caused to motivate you to serve the Lord is that love. They want to know, do you really love me? Because that's going to open up the door. When they find out that you're real and you love them, you can speak into their life. And they're looking for the real deal. Turn to somebody and say, you look like the real deal. Come on. Some of you didn't even look. <laughs> There's this couple, you know, they were grocery shopping. They Every week they go out shopping and they were walking around and, and there's, you know, buying things. And they saw uh, uh, some peaches on sale. The wife saw these jars of peaches on sale. So she went over there and got a jar of peaches. And rather than putting it in the basket, they, she put it in her purse. And they went on around and put the groceries in their, their car. And they, you know, went through the check stand. And, and they're walking to the car. And all of a sudden, they hear somebody yelling at them. And all of a sudden, it's the manager and some box boys that were. And said, excuse me, ma'am, ma'am. Uh, uh, you're going to have to come back to the back office. Because our video shows that you stole a jar of peaches. And uh, I'm sorry, that's against the law. And so uh, they went back there, and she filled out a whole bunch of paperwork, and she went to court, and she's standing before the judge, and the judge says, you know, we had a hard time trying to figure this out because we've never had this situation, uh, but you know, there's a penalty for stealing. So we came to the conclusion that um, we counted all the peaches in that jar, and for every peach that was in that jar, you're going to have to spend a day in jail. And ma'am, there was nine peaches in that jar. So you're going to have to spend nine days in jail. And he is about ready to bring his gavel down. And all of a sudden, her husband stands up and says, Your Honor, I'm so sorry, but she stole a can of peas too. <laughs> Slap somebody, give him five. Say, that was good. Amen. 
I don't know about you, but I have a good time serving God. Amen? I, I, come on, give the Lord a hand. I mean, he's worthy of it. Matthew. You know, God's a God of questions. He's always asking questions. If you go through the Old Testament, God is always asking questions. But in the New Testament, you'll find out, and there's many places in the New Testament where Jesus was uh, asking questions. But I, I want to uh, ask you a question. God wants to ask you a question, but then he wants to put a, a, a word on the inside of it that will help you when you go out this, the doors. And in Matthew, the ninth chapter, if you got your Bible, verse 27, and I think they put it up there. Look at this. And as Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him and crying out, Have mercy on us, son of David. Let me stop here and say to you, uh, it, the message is not what I want to say to you right here, but we've got to have mercy. We should be the most merciful people on the face of the earth. But you know what I found out after I've been in the, this is our 46th year full-time ministry. I, I'm 47. I didn't like that laugh over there at all. But anyway, uh, 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 what I found out is, is Christians are judgmental. I mean, boy, you know what I have a hard time with is religious pastors. I mean, they come after me because of the way I dress. I mean, I had one that's come up to me and said, Brother Hudson, how can a, a preacher of the gospel wear skinny jeans? I said, because my legs are skinny. They didn't call them fat jeans. They called them skinny jeans. And he wanted to put me in hell for wearing skinny jeans. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Religious people, I have a problem. They have a problem with me. You know, but God, you know, loves us just like we are. And we're all very unique. Come on. And God, come on. And God wants you to be yourself. He wants you to be yourself. And, 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 uh, and so... We should be mercy motivated, merciful on people because if you sow mercy, you'll need mercy. How many know in the future you're going to need some mercy? Come on, and we need to be merciful people. We got to, listen, we got to learn to receive people just as they are. Come on. Every generation is very unique. Come on. Every generation is very different. I remember when I was in my generation, I was in the 60s. I was a yippie. That's a radical hippie. And I used to have long blonde hair. Went all the way down here. I mean, beautiful blonde. I used to sit at the bar, be drinking, and uh, guys would come up, tap me on the shoulder, want to dance with me and, until I turned around. And uh, they said, no, thank you. I said, no, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I mean, come on. But, but our generation, uh, we were the hippie generation. We were very unique. And, and I mean, oh, God raised up the Jesus movement. And the Jesus people. And we were radical, man. We got saved. And, 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 and God has his hand on this generation. It's very, and you have to learn to accept people just as they are and let God do the work. And don't try to mold them in the way you think they should be. Let God do it. Amen. And just love them and be a friend to them and reach out to them. And, and, and it said, these two blind men, they said, mercy, son of David, have mercy. Do you know God will stop at mercy? God operates in mercy. I don't know about you, but I want mercy on. Listen, we need mercy on our on our nation. We need mercy on our government. Come on. We need mercy for our loved ones. Mercy for your son that's out there. Mercy for your daughter. Mercy. Somebody say mercy. mercy. We got to have mercy, but this is not where I want to go. Verse 28, and when they entered the house, the two blind men came up to him. And Jesus said, look at this to them. Now look what he said. Do you believe that I am able to do this? When I read that, the Spirit of the Lord fell upon me and he said, Son, that's what I'm asking the church. Do you believe that God is able to do what he said he would do? Do you believe that God is able to get you that job that you need? Come on, somebody. Do you believe that God's able to heal your body that he said, I am the Lord thy God that healeth? Come on. Do you believe that God is able to get that? Come on. That money that you need? Do you believe that God is able to get you, uh, that you could fall in love with, with someone if you're single and have a mate? You guys are quiet on that one. <laughs> now, let me tell you something. You, you, you single people, you know, and you women, you, listen. <laughs> you, you want a Boaz. Yeah, not a broke ass. 
Come on. <laughs> or turn to tell somebody that's the truth. Come on, come on. <laughs> I know you've never said anything like that. You're so pure. I wonder what you said coming to church. Uh-oh, look out. <laughs> He said, do you believe that I'm able to do this? God's asking you a question, and I want to move on from there. Do you believe that God is able to do what he said he'd do? And it doesn't matter what you're going through and whatever you're facing, God is able. Come on, he's faithful. If he's already seen you this far, come on, somebody, give him a praise. He is worthy, and he's faithful. And whatever you're going through, God knows that. And this too shall pass. You say, well, yeah, but you just don't understand. No, but I do understand God. And God's got your back. And he loves us and he's working on us. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Come on. Because he's working 24-7 on your behalf. People say, I don't know about this Holy Ghost stuff. Listen, if God did not think that you needed the Holy Ghost, he would have never sent it to you. But we need him, and he's working and doing things, and he's tweaking some things, and he's speaking to people. Even when you're in bed asleep, he's working. Come on, he's working 24-7 on your behalf. Do you believe that God is able? Some of you might be facing some kind of a, a sickness or you went to the doctor and, and, and they don't give you a good, uh, you know, report. But do you believe that God's able to heal your body? Come on. Do you believe that God's able to get that finances that you need or that car that you need because you need it to go to work or the, or the place to live? Do you believe that God is able? Look at this here. I want to say something right here. Look at this response. And they said to him, the disciples said to him, yes, Lord. When I saw the word yes, God says, I've saved a yes to put into this generation. You need a yes in your life. Come on. When you go out this door, you're going to have this yes right here. Come on. You got, you'll walk because you need this yes. And look what he said because of that response. The 29th verse says, and then he touched their eyes saying, it shall be done unto you according to your. No, he didn't. Didn't say that. Are you read what? You got a Mormon Bible? He said, then he touched their eyes, saying, It shall be done unto you according to your. No, he didn't say that. He said, It shall be done according to your yes. That's what God moved on. Their yes. Most people would say, well, you know, Lord, sit down for a little bit. Let me tell you about the situation, and let me give you a whole scope on this. It might take about 20, 30 minutes, and I've had a lot of people pray for it, and nothing ever happened. But you know what? I, no, God would have moved on. He just wanted to get a yes. You know what God wants out of you is a yes. You know what you need in your life? A yes. Yes, Lord, I believe that you're well able to do what you said you will do. Come on. God's a yes God. He's more of a yes for you than he is a no. I had a real quick little vision, and I saw the Pac-Man. How many know what the Pac-Man is? Pac-Man, and he's going around, and, he's, and, and I saw the Pac-Man was a yes man, and he was going around over all the Christians, and he was, he was eating these no's. No, you can't do this, and no, you won't do that. No, look at the color of your skin, and no, look at your education, and no, you'll never make it. No, 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 and I saw the yes man, the Pac-Man, he was eating them all. Yes, you will. Yes, you're going to be something. Yes, you can do it. Yes, all things are possible. Yes, yes, yes. Somebody say, yes, Lord. I believe that you're well able to do what you said you would do. Now stand on your feet. I'm going to pray with you just for a minute. We're going to minister to some people. And we're going to get out before the Baptists do. Here's more important. Come on, honey, get your microphone. We're going to minister to some people here. You need this yes right here. When God gave me this revelation of a yes, man, I'm telling you what, things started changing. Because the enemy would approach me, and the enemy and, and situation and obstacles would come up, and all of a sudden I'd hear this yes. And things started to change. Some of you are facing some situations right now that you've got to have this yes. I mean, and some of them are really 
you know, maybe a doctor's report, like I said, or maybe you're about ready to lose your home or whatever else, but God's got a yes. Come on, somebody. And we're going to pray. Put your hand and just close your eyes and put your hand right in the middle of your chest and just start praying right now. Father, we thank you for this yes uh, that you're going to release upon these people tonight. God, you said you've saved a yes for this generation. It's not a yes from man or a yes from a church but or a yes from an organization, but God, it's a yes from heaven. And Lord, I ask you to begin to, come on, everybody pray a little bit. Open up your mouth and say Lord I need this yes in my life. Father I thank you for this yes Father to release it now in the name of Jesus. A, a yes for the business. A yes for the ministry. A yes for this person that's dealing with sickness and a disease. A yes uh, for the finances Lord. Thank you for the yes Father in Jesus name in Jesus name. For yes I am a good God and all good things come down from the Father of lights and who is no variableness or shadow of turning don't you see? No I am not a God that rejects you that is the enemy and yes there is one that would oppose you don't you see but you have authority but you've got to take that authority which is in your hand that baton that I've given you which is the name of Jesus and other weapons of your warfare don't you see and as you use that authority the enemy will back away from thee. Hallelujah. Somebody praise him. Come on, somebody say, yes, Lord. Come on, so open your mouth and say, yes, Lord. I believe that you're well able. Let me ask you a question. How many are sitting here or standing here? You're sick in your body. You got a, a, something wrong with your body. Just raise your hand up right now. Here's what we're going to do. Just raise your hand up. If you're sick, come on. Don't wait until after the service. We're going to pray for you right now. All right. And the Lord is asking you this now. Everybody keep your hand up. Here's what we're going to do. I want people to look around and you'll see people, their hand up is important. I want you to just touch them right now. And I want you that raise your hand. I want you to begin to say, yes, Lord, I believe that you're able to heal me. Come on, say it. Yes, Lord, I believe. Come on, everybody else pray in Jesus' name. Uh, Father, I thank you for healing these bodies. Uh, yes, we believe you are the Lord thy God that heals, Father. We thank you for the diseases to go in Jesus' name. Father, come on, somebody, you got to pray a little little bit open up your mouth and you that are standing with your hand up and say yes Lord I believe that you're well able to heal my body Lord in the name of Jesus come on pray Father we thank you for the healing anointing to flow in the name of Jesus hallelujah we praise your Lord now give the Lord a praise thank him hallelujah go ahead sit down sit down just for a moment I'm coming down here I'm going to go fishing honey you can come with me all right all right, you come with me. The closer I get, the younger I look. <laughs> Did you know that I turned 71 in June? Not bad, huh? Long life. You see, and, you, you, and the only reason I'm at that age is because I'm taking care of this temple. I dress it up on the outside, and I dress it up on the inside. Come on, somebody. Uh, my wife. Looking good. We're the same age. I'm maybe six months ahead. Look at that. She looks like Katy Perry, doesn't she? She better, bless God. Hallelujah. We've got a problem. She can't sing, though. Hallelujah. Stand up here. But I can prophesy. You know what? There's an anointing. Give us, a, we've got about 20 minutes. Where are you going? Over here? All right, we've got 20 minutes. We're going to just minister to people. Is that okay? We're just a minute. Now, I'm not going to be able to, to pray for everybody. But listen, we don't live by prophecy. We live by faith. You don't live by signs and wonders or miracles. You live by faith. And, you know, if we close the doors and lock them up, we could probably minister to every person in here. But we're not here to do that. The greater work that you have word on the inside is yes, Lord. Somebody say yes, Lord. I want you to hear it when you walk out of here and you get in your car or when you go back and have something to eat. I want you to hear it when you get up in the morning and when you're taking a shower, you're going to hear the Holy Ghost say, yes, Lord. Now, come on. When you get in your car and you're driving down there, you're going to say, yes, Lord, I believe. And you start operating in that realm, all of a sudden you'll see things. Come on. Begin to operate in your life because God is a yes God and he wants uh, things to take place. Uh, take 
caring for your life. He wants to do great things in your life. And the Lord said, there's a, an anointing. God says, I've rescued you from the enemy's hand, but I've placed you in my hand. And knowing these days to come, I'm going to make a Pied Piper out of you, and you're going to begin to blow the horn, and they're going to come. Now, not one or two, but multitudes. The Lord said, I'm going to put a word in your mouth because you've been faithful in a few things. I'm going to make you a ruler over much. Yes, and even... And even that joy and holiness that permeates you and surrounds you, but it comes out with a, a, a glad spirit, not a religious one too. But know that there's also a great creativity that was birthed in you even uh, when you were young. And you kind of put it on the back shelf, but now it's time to dust it off and bring it out again. Because even if you think it's not what you're doing or relevant to what you are, I will make bridges. I will create pathways and I will present you in front of people because of this uh, creativity that you have and the ability that you have to make this thing don't you see it's going to bring you into the hands of great people who you will cause to believe in me hallelujah somebody praise him where's the pastor's son pastor's son where's he at is the pastor's son what's he doing out there eating is he got, I, want, I have a word for him. Run and get him quickly. I want to pray, not just because he's a pastor's son, but I had that already. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, let's just worship the Lord just for a moment. Come on, just worship him because he's worthy. He's worthy. Come on, there's an anointing here, and God wants to. Honey, there's a, God is going to do something unique in, in your family. The Lord said, I've been, you've been praying for your family. God says, I'm going to do it behind the scenes. I'm working on your behalf. And because uh, you, uh, you're working on my behalf, I'm going to work on your behalf. And know that it's coming to pass. Those that you put on the altar, those tears that you uh, have put on the altar, the Lord says, I'm rearranging and I'm changing, saith the Spirit of grace. Yes, yeah, so and my daughter, you've got much more authority than you think. So stand up against the enemy and don't let let him take one uh, one step more, don't you see? Even as you stand up and who you are in me, saith the Lord. Yes, he's going to back down because he's going to see how serious you are and how you recognize this is what has been the hindrance so far. And yes, it's been like a rock of Gibraltar standing in between the relationship. It's true. But I'm going to make it crumble like dust right in front of you. Hallelujah. Somebody say, yes, Lord. I believe. That you're well able. Do you believe that God's well able? Yes. Let me ask you a question before I pray for the pastor's son. Uh, quickly, if you are, um, uh, if you have a business, okay, now listen to me, very important. If you have a business, you're self-employed, you have a legitimate, a bit, not selling weed on the corner. <laughs> Some of you probably, well, anyway, Hallelujah. If that's you, stand up quickly. If you have a business, I'm, I'm, the reason why I want to tell you something, that, that God is touching businesses all over this nation. The reason why God wants to bless you so you can be a blessing. Come on. I said he wants to bless you so you can be a blessing. And, and, and not just so you can have a great business and make a lot of money and drive a Cadillac and, and tow a Lincoln. You know, he wants to, wouldn't you like to, hey, how was that hamburger? Wipe your mouth off. I saw it. How I many you know God? Listen, I'm telling you, God is moving on businesses and He's raising up millionaires in the church. Now, come on, how many like to be a millionaire? Come on. No, seriously. I know when you I know when you talk about money, people get really come on. I, 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 listen, I'm believing God for all I, I like Shark Tank. I watch the reruns of Shark Tank. I said, God, give me a, a you know, give me a, he gave me a little invention. I'll tell you, will you promise not to do it? I mean, if I gave you, I don't want you to steal it, go out here and make millions of dollars and don't do nothing for me. But, but I came up, it's called Lazy Man Pancakes. Oh, yeah. Lazy Man Pancakes. And what you really do is you take popcorn and you put it in, in, in the batter, and then you put the, 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 the pancakes in the skillet, and when the popcorn pops, it flips the pancake over. Come on, somebody. Ah. Now, please don't go home and try that, because they know you went to church. 
I want an invention. Come on, I'm, there's things out there that God, God wants to make people money. Come on, he does. Come on, raise your hands towards heaven. Father, we pray. I want you to say this out loud. I believe, Lord, that you're well able to touch my business. Yes, Lord, I believe in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I thank you to begin to release, uh, in Jesus' name, uh, uh, finances, Lord, uh, inventions and witty inventions, Lord, upon these businesses. Show them, Lord, where the money is. Uh, increase their businesses, Father. Begin to bless them so they can be a blessing uh, in the name of Jesus. Yes, and even the souls that will come through your hands because you've decided to be a giver, and that is grand. It's true, but there's going to be more required of you, don't you see, saith the Lord? Because I want you to be excellent. I want you to be on the top of the curve. I want you to be ahead, and I'm not the tail, don't you see? Yes, it's always been uh, uh, something that you've wanted to do, but it's not going to be done in mediocrity. Even in this last day, I want you to shine and be a star for me, don't you see? Even as you rise up and take hold of that thing which seems tough and it seems difficult to do, I will send people along your side, even like Aaron and Hur held up Moses' arms when his arms got tired. Yes, there will be experts who will come to you. They'll advise and they'll show you what to do, and it won't be this big strain it'll be an easy flow and you'll know that my holy spirit is on the go hallelujah somebody praise him glory go ahead sit down you doing good uh, all right praise god i had a word for the lord you know the lord said i'm building another platform i'm expanding it and building some new uh places the lord said i'm going to turn some things around for the good and, and for the glory the lord says you're going to do incredible things that will supersede your father the lord said i placed you at the right place at the right time uh, god says you've been faithful in the little things that i've placed you in your hand but god says i'm going to i'm going to stretch forth my hand and put things in your hands that's going to multiply like never before so stand fast stay stay under authority stay humble before me and watch me work on your behalf yes and even a kingly even a kingly and a priestly anointing is on you my son one that can gather souls and one that can gather money too for the kingdom it's true and yes that desire of your heart to go out in one way yes keep it balanced even from this day because there will be an opportunity for, for uh, crusades and, and things that you've stirred in your heart but know that it's going to take the finances and of that you will be a part because you've got a sharp tongue and a strong mind and you're able to talk to people fearlessly don't you see you're able to talk to people in high positions who will listen to you and they will accept me but not only will they accept me they will gr gr bring you grants and they will bring you finances too to get through into these places that you know need to do you have a creative ability you have an eye of the tiger too you see things that are not being fulfilled and that's the uh, corners and the avenues that you want to go to i'm going to give you that opportunity my son and these people will gather up and yes they'll surround you and they'll support you too hallelujah come on praise him hallelujah somebody say yes lord if you're from the age of uh, 13 to 30, stand up. 13 to 30, quickly. 13 to 30. This is my window. You know, um, there's different windows. 13 to now Somebody looked at another person uh, like you didn't know how old you were or something. Yeah. 13 to 30. This is my window. This is where I um, zero in. Not that um, people that are... Um, you know, seasoned, I won't say old, but seasoned, they have a, a place in the body of Christ. But, but God has got his hand on the 13 to 30 generation. This is the, the window that God has placed me to pray for and to believe God. And I can see there's a remnant of people. Don't you want to be, come on, the remnant of people that, come on. I mean, there's a great anointing that God's releasing upon the earth. He's just looking for some of you. that, And it's not going to be hard because God doesn't make it hard. He's going to make it easy because of him and the anointing that he's releasing upon us to do and equip. And, the, and didn't the Bible say that he's going to do a quick work? You're going to do a quick work. Some of your loved ones are going to get turned around. Come on, somebody. Amen. So I want everybody else that are sitting down to stretch your hands towards these that are standing up. Father, we lift.
lift up this generation. Lord, we lift up the, these that are standing. God, I thank you, Lord, that your hand is upon them, that you're going to use them. God, give them night visions, Lord, in the night, Lord. Give them, Father, show them things, uh, their purpose, even at an early age, God, uh, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Begin to release uh, that anointing upon their life and do things, uh, God, that only they could do through the help of the Holy Ghost. And, Father, I thank you for blessing them and using them in a great, unique way in Jesus' name. So casting down imaginations and every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, know that I am not a God of the past. I am a God of the present and the future, don't you see? As you press forth to the mark of the high calling of God that I have on thee, it's so individual. It so burns in your heart, and you think, oh, this cannot be. Don't overthink this thing. Let your spirit talk to you. Yes, and even as you nourish your spirit in my word and in prayer, it'll become stronger and clearer as even you would go out on a dare. Yes, and do those things that you've always wanted to. But your mind said, no, no, this is something I cannot do. It's left to another. That's not me, saith the Lord. I am the God of the overcomer. I am the God of the more than enough. I am the God that wants to push you forth. And yes, and even as you go and you put your hands to the plow, it'll be so easy. This time the ground will not be hard. It'll be smooth sailing. You'll be cruising across. So so do it again and see if you've not been planted in this place to do exactly what I've shown you to. Hallelujah. Somebody praise him. Thank you, Lord. You know, uh, remain standing for a second. You know, when I stood before you, the Lord said, son, I made you big in the natural, make you big in the spirit. I made you strong in the natural, make you strong in the spirit. And God says, I'm, I'm doing some new things in your life. I'm going to begin to show you his specific things to do. Uh, I'm going to place things in your hands, and you're going to be able to take them and, and form them the way that I desire them to be. And God says, I'm, I'm going to use you for this generation. God says, I'm going to put a, a word in your heart and in your mouth, and, and when you open it up, there will be anointing to heal and to set the captives free. Uh, the Lord says, in these days to come, just stay right uh, and, and stay right right not to the left or the or to the right but stay right in front Lord and the Lord said I'm going to take care of you and I'm going to supply all your needs and take care of whatever the situation may be Yes, it's like an hourglass, don't you see? One phase is ending, and but the hourglass is about to tip over, and a brand new phase is starting for thee. Because you've had this mercy, you've had this grace, and you have this love and compassion that flows through you, and yet you are an obedient one, and yet you come under authority. You tell people gently what to do. And yes, this is something that I am going to lead you into that gifting, that ability that you have to gather for me. And yes, you are going to go places that you hadn't even imagined when you were a young boy your family would have laughed at thee but now they're beginning to wonder and scratch their heads because they see such a change such a turn such a humility yes you were bossed around and you were bullied it was true but all that has left you and you're rising up like a phoenix out of the ashes yeah. to do that thing which i have showed you to hallelujah thank you lord jesus you know uh you know, when you were standing up here, uh, there, there were, the Lord showed me there's a, a, an anointing that he is releasing on your life. And when you stand before people, it's not going to be a song from church or a song from a, uh, that's out there now. God says, I'm going to release a song from heaven. And when you open up your mouth, the word's going to go forth as you sing. And it's going to go through the congregation and begin to heal people and set people free just under that anointing. The Lord says, well, I'm going to use you as a mouthpiece unto me. And uh, you're going to sing a song from heaven. Not, not a song from an organization or a church, but a song from heaven. And the heavens are going to open up and people are going to be touched uh, by the anointing because uh, you're pure, you're faithful to me. The Lord says, I'm going to use you in a great way. Yes, and even those lyrics and those words that I've given you to arrange, there's one, there's my epicoriego, my Holy Spirit that's coming to bring it all together. Yes, it's going to be symphonic, it's true. But even as you've written in your journal, yes, and put it down, yes, it's more to do. It's time to get moving on that, don't you see? Because people or hearts are waiting out there to hear the voice that I've given you. So don't delay, yes, and get with other people that have been in this same way. And yes, they will want to encourage and they will 
want to show you. So yes, you've done some of it, it's true, but you've stood back and think, wow, could I do something like that? There's one coming along that's going to help with this whole orchestration, don't you see, and put every instrument in place, and uh, it will turn out to be perfect harmony. Hallelujah. Somebody praise him. Come on, put your hand on your chest and look towards heaven and say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I, believe I believe that you're well able, you're well able to, do to do what you said you would do. Now give the Lord a shout and a praise. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. I believe, Lord. Now, now, we've only got a few few moments here, and, and then I think they're having something outside. And, and, and the, well, you want to go fishing? we only got a few minutes. Okay, go fishing. She's going fishing. I'm going to let her go fishing. Even as you have been a great encourager to many and you've drawn and there have been lonely times and the enemies come to you when you've been alone, but know that as you worship me and you've ramped up that worshiping, it's true, and more is coming through you, but you're a gatherer, don't you see, and you can speak to people and even young women too in ways that they haven't been spoken to before that will get to their hearts and open a door, and yes, as you continue to do this and count Counsel, don't you see? Yes, there's a heart that is within you. And yes, it's precious to me, saith the Lord. So know that you're never alone. I'm always with you. I'd never leave you, never forsake you, saith the Holy Spirit. And there's more that's coming along. It's going to be bigger than you ever thought. It's like throwing a pebble into a, a, a lake. It's going to cause small circles at first, and the circles are going to go out, and then it's going to be totally great. Hallelujah. Go fishing. Mary is going fishing. Thank you, Jesus. Afrashingo hostikriya brasidiar. E brasikriya. When you first took up that camera, it was sort of like a, a, a something in front of you where you didn't have to uh, show off your personality. It was something that uh, you could work through too. But you didn't realize the creativity and the ability which you had to do. And now more is coming to you. And yes, know that my hand is upon you, my son. So uh, don't be shy with what I've given you because it's a tool for my glory. And people are going to start to understand me because of the pictures that come through thee. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Faithful and good at what you do, organized and uh, precise too. And yes, in unity and harmony, people have opposed you, it's true. Know that you're not fighting flesh and blood, but powers and principalities too. As long as you take that perspective, it cannot any longer affect your mind, don't you see? Because that's where the battlefield is, and I've already won it for you. I've won every battle that's ever come against you. Yes, know that you stand up on the inside because this is a business I've given you. This is a money-making tool, and yes, you're going to do great things for my kingdom, and yes, you're going to be part of it too. And yes, you've done a little bit, it's true, but but there's more coming to you. Don't let these thoughts take you down. No, start to praise me, start to agree, and start to walk out even on the things that the two of you agree on. That's where my anointing and that's where my favor lies on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. How many of you, uh, how many of you are believing uh, either you have, and I'm going to do this and we're going to, we're going to do some couple of things we've got a certain time span here and we know school starts tomorrow right does school start tomorrow wow but anyway i don't know but uh, uh uh if you if you have a son or a daughter that's fallen away from the grace of god please stand to your feet we want to stand in gap for you the lord says i want you to begin to pray uh, for for sons and daughters uh, the Lord gives me a scripture, and this is for you. And don't be ashamed because God's doing a work behind the scenes for your sons and daughters. Uh, the Bible says a righteous woman sanctifies the house. And and the Lord gave me, I always ask God, give me a scripture. Do, do you know, look at me here. Do you know there's a word or a scripture for whatever you're going through right now? If you'll open up God's mouthpiece, he'll give you a word for whatever you're going through. And there's times uh, that I ask God to give me a word for my daughter. Now, all of you know that that, that, that she's not where I want her to be or, or where I, you know. 
she's moving in a direction. Where she's moving in a direction, okay? And we're not condemning her. We're loving her back into the kingdom. Come on. And and so, um, and you may say, well, is it tough? Well, there has been tough. We, we go through, I mean, isn't, you know, we have to fight a lot of, uh, you know, stupid paparazzi and news press people and all that. They're all crazy and, and they lie and, you know what I'm talking about? And they always want to you split your families up. But like I said, we have a, a tight family. But the Lord gave me a scripture, and this is for you tonight. And I want you to begin to decree it. See, you have a, your voice has an address in heaven. If you never use it, nothing is going to show up. You got to open your mouth. Whatever thou shalt decree shall be established. If you don't put your voice to it and begin to decree God's word, God says, so, my, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of your mouth. It shall not return void, but it shall accomplish and prosper into the thing that you send it. But if you never send God's word, nothing will. Come on, somebody, help me. So I asked God to give me scriptures for, uh, and, and the Lord gave me this one. He says, did I not say in the last days I pour out my spirit on all flesh? That's a good one. But then the last part better than the first part. And he says, your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Come on. Your sons and daughters. If you got a son or a daughter, I want you to say, my son. Come on, out loud. My daughter shall prophesy. Come on. If you got a son or a daughter, say it out loud. My son, my daughter will prophesy. Now give him a shout. Hallelujah. I want you to begin to decree it. I want you to begin to decree that God, my daughter, is going to prophesy in Jesus' name. And when you get a phone call or you get into a situation or they have a situation, you can put the phone down and say, but Lord, my son shall prophesy. Come on. Hallelujah. If today's message impacted you in any way, and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below, and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.